What is up, Vikings fans? Chris Corso here on the Minnesota Vikings podcast with Hercules Mata Afa. He has a big time opportunity this season in that three technique spot. What's going on, man? Hey, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, I'm doing good. We're just out here playing ball. Coach Zimmer came off the practice field the other day and said very good things about you, saying that there's an opportunity for you to take a ton of snaps at the three technique position this season. What is your feeling on that? I saw you tweeted out that you feel blessed and you've been waiting for this opportunity. Yeah, I just look up, look back about uh, at all the hard work I put in uh, over the course of the years I've been here. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to be able to have my opportunity this year. And I know it's going to be a big year for me. We had you listed on the website at 254 last year. And I saw a tweet where you're standing on a scale and it says 289 in weight. How the heck did you put on that much weight this offseason? Uh, man, it's hard. It's hard to maintain that weight. And uh, I'm just totally, uh, kind of just finding my mid-level where I'm like really supposed to be at. So right now I'm weighing around like 283, 280. So I'm in that range right now. And, uh, you know, it feels good. Uh, it's definitely helping me with the uh, double teams this year. Uh, uh, shows at practice and, uh, you know, it's something I'm excited about, it's something I worked really hard to, to get there. And, uh, you know, just putting in the hard work and I'm just going to continue the grind. Did you eat like a bunch of cheeseburgers during quarantine or were you like doing <laughs> squats in the gym or something like that? I had my mama's cooking. What, <laughs> kind, that, of that, cooking, what kind of cooking is that? You know, I come home to a, a pizza, some steaks, uh, pork ribs, uh, some Hawaiian barbecue. I don't know if you ever had some Hawaiian barbecue, but if you Sounds haven't, awesome. if you haven't, I, I know there's no Hawaiians out here in Minnesota or Polynesians out here. So maybe you have to come over and I'll, I'll throw, throw some stuff on the grill for you. I'm a big foodie. So I would love that. Look, going back to your days in Hawaii, that is very unique for an NFL player to grow up in Hawaii and learn how to play football. What was the football scene like over there just growing up? in such a, a place where football isn't as, as big and, and prevalent? Uh, we, we don't play on the actual football field. You know, we play on dirt and rocks and pebbles. You know, it's really just like that gritty, gritty uh, backyard football field when we put on the pads back in Hawaii. So, you know, that's where the toughness in me comes from. And uh, I think it shows and uh, I, I think it's kind of um, contagious in a way. And I think uh, my peers around me, like the way that I go out there and go about myself. Uh, looking back with the Vikings, you come here as an undrafted free agent. You make the roster, the 53-man roster. What was that feeling like to not be drafted, get the call from the Vikings, and come here and make the roster? Uh, you know, uh, I got a big family, so everybody's always on me saying, hey, Herb, you got to go out there and do your job. You know, they're really hard on me when, when it comes to that. So. You know, I take it with a bunch of seriousness, you know, never backing down from any opponent and just going in there, keeping my head down, uh, being my playbook and, you know, just be a real student in the game and learn how to play football for real. Because once you get here, I feel like a lot of people really don't know how to read like offensive formations or things like that. That's something I had to learn. That's something that's making me a better football player. In 2018, you tear your ACL, which is just has to be absolutely heartbreaking after doing all you did to make the roster. What was that feeling like? And describe coming back from that to where you are today. Well, it was in, a, in, in a way, it was kind of, kind of a double whammy because I went out, uh, I left college early as a ju redshirt junior, and I declared it to draft, and I went undrafted. And then a week into the, to the training camp, or OTAs, I mean, uh, I was playing linebacker, and then they finally moved me to a de defensive line position. And then a week after that, I tore my ACL. So I was like, I thought I lost my opportunity. But, you know, uh, Coach Dre really, uh, he brought me into the to his room, and, you know, he really sat down with me and said, he, th he thinks I could be a great player. Uh, he just wants me to put on the weight and uh, just continue to lift weights. and do what I need to do to be the player I need to be. And, uh, you know, I just took that head on. There's players, veterans, people all over the NFL that really give Coach Dre the credit for what they've done in this league. 
What can you say about the relationship that you guys have? And when he comes to you and says you're a good player, how does that make you feel? Uh, just to see the history of guys he coached in the league and how long he's been doing it. Uh, there's a certain uh, respect just based off the criteria he's been able to uh, accumulate. And that goes for the respect of the game, too. You know, I, I respect all my coaches. And uh, Dre is a guy that, you know, really believed in me and my capabilities of what I can do. And, you know, he's a real players coach in that, in that sense of uh, – in that way. And, uh, you know, anything he says, you know, I'm, I'm going to think about – I'm going to go out there and try to do it my, the best way I can. So, yeah. That's Looking, I, I was reading an article – that you do not wear gloves out on the field when you're rushing the passer. Is that like a, a thing that dates back to your days growing up in Hawaii, being able to feel the dirt? Or why do you not wear gloves when you're out on the field? Really, it's just preference, you know. Uh, but I like getting my hands on guys and out physically my opponent, opponents. And, you know, nobody's out there. Everybody's out there wearing gloves. And, you know, I'm the only one wearing – I'm not wearing any. So, you know, just kind of – a my personal thing, uh, just be tougher than the guy across from me. So in the preseason last season, you sack Teddy Bridgewater on an awesome play where you get to the quarterback. What was the feeling like to get back in a game and have a sack on a quarterback like that? Uh, it was really like uh, forecoming for me because after all the work I put in off season to rehab my knee and get bigger, get stronger, you know, that was the first game of my NFL career, and I was able to go out there and get a sack, and it was a relieving moment for me, just a uh, dream come true, really. And, uh, you know, that's the only thing I ever grew up thinking about, is just sacking uh, all-time legends and, you know, all, all the greats in the game, and, you know, it's just keeping me motivated. So I can think of an undrafted defensive tackle who was undersized and was a Hall of Famer for the Vikings, and that's John Randall. Johnny Randall. Can, do you do you know a lot about his game? Do you look at his game? Do you kind of frame your game after his? Oh, that's the thing. Uh, Dre kind of hit at me. He said, uh, I remind him a lot of Johnny, and, you know, I go in there. He he, he puts some special film on for, on my iPad for me to watch watch John Randall rush the quarterback. And, you know, he's just a – he was just a tenacious, vicious dude in there, and – you know, I just want to kind of imitate that in my own way and make it my sort of thing. When you see a guy like Michael Pierce decide to opt out the big free agent acquisition for the Vikings um, this offseason, he's no longer going to be on this roster for the upcoming season. What does that mean for you to have that opportunity to fill in and be the starter on this team? Well, for anybody that ever played football, they always know that one term, it's always the next man up. And that's how I'm feeling right now is like I have my big opportunity ahead of me and, you know, I got to capitalize on it and I'm the next man up. So I need to go out there and execute what I can do and uh, show the world uh, how, how I can play football. We touched on a couple of veterans on this team that have been here for years, Limbaugh, Joseph, Everson, Griffin. Those guys are no longer here, but they definitely left an impact on some of you younger players in the, in the locker room. So what kind of impact did they leave on you? Uh, those guys were a big, big, big uh, part of what I am right now because just because I was able to talk to them, uh, you know, if Dre doesn't really explain anything, I don't want to ask Dre the question. I'll go and ask uh, Everson or LJ, and you know, they're just kind of that big brother in the room. You know, they they took out, they took took care of the younger guys in the room. Always always try to coach them up when uh, we we feel like we, we weren't really understanding what, what was being taught at the moment and. You know, in that sense of way, in the vet way, it, it was big brother, little brother type of deal. Last question. I can't let this interview go by without asking you about your first name, the name Hercules. It is an amazing name. And tell us what that means to you and your family. Well, it would definitely not been good if I was 5'3 and 160, right? <laughs> I probably wouldn't be talking about my name if I was 5'3 and 160. But, uh, yeah, uh, when I was born, uh, I was the heaviest of uh, seven kids, and uh, I weighed 10 pounds, 10.6, I think. And my name was supposed to be Anthony, 
But my mom looked at me and she's like, that's a big boy. We got to name him Hercules. And that was the end of it. Or that's the story I know. Well, that's certainly a football name in the name of a Minnesota Viking. I love it. Thank you for joining us this week on the Minnesota Vikings podcast. And I cannot wait to see what you do in the middle of this Vikings defense next year. Thanks, man. Appreciate you, big dog. All right. Have a good one.